Hey everybody, we've got some big news today. Blackmagic just announced some new switchers in their ATM lineup. So I've got a lot of information about those. Talk about what's great, what's not so great, what you should consider when you're purchasing each one of them, or considering purchasing one of them, and why, if you have an ATM mini, you might want to stick with it. So, yeah, so this morning we were kind of surprised to see that Blackmagic had announced some new switchers, not via a press conference, but via just their website. So. You have to kind of be watching and uh, waiting and checking the site often in order to be made aware of these announcements. So what they've done today is they've announced three new models of switchers, and they're calling these Constellation HD models. So there's three different models, and I'll get into the differences between them in a moment, but to quick, very quickly summarize, so we've got the new Constellation 1ME, which has 10 inputs, six outputs, a single ME, then you jump up to the 2ME Constellation HD, which has 20 inputs and 12 outputs. And then you get to the Constellation 4ME, which has 40 inputs and 24 outputs. It's, that one is very much a scaled back version of the Constellation Switcher that they've been selling for the last three years. So instead of supporting 8K, it's HD only. So the first thing that I want to make mention of is that there is a little bit of disappointment, at least on my part, that these models are HD only. So if you're looking for a 4K workflow, I think what Blackmagic is saying, we either want you on the Constellation or hold tight a little bit longer. I don't know which of those that is. I have no inside information. But if you're looking for to do 4K or maybe grow into 4K at some time in the future, these models probably aren't going to be right for you. But they're going to be right for a lot of other people. However, on the flip side, there are some things that are missing from these switchers when you compare it to something like the ATEM Mini. Now, I'll get into some of those specifics as I review each one, but just kind of spoiler alert, first of all, they don't have internal streaming, so you can't stream directly to the internet. You still need something separate like a web presenter or a video or a live view in order to make that happen. Also, there's no internal recording, and so if you want to re record the program that you're producing, you're going to need to use an external recorder like an ATEM, or sorry, like a HyperDeck Studio, one of those models, or something similar uh, for separate, for, as a separate component in order to produce a recording of the, your finished video. Also, obviously, you don't have internal isolated recordings of your various cameras. So a few things that are kind of missing there compared to their other models. All right, so with that, let's actually jump in and talk about what each one of these things actually is, because these are actually pretty exciting. We've been waiting for these for a long time. In a lot of ways, these are exactly what we expected, but in some of the other ways, they're not. And so as I go through the models, I'll kind of talk about some of each of that. So let's first of all take a look. These are the new models that they are announcing today. We've got the 1ME, 2ME, and 4ME Constellation HD models. So I take a look at the front here. We've got some nice high quality buttons, very similar to the buttons that are on the Television Studio uh, HD that the, the low end model seems to be intended to replace. Uh, you've got the ability to actually cut program on this. So you'll be able to switch between sources and cut and do, uh, and do automatic transitions from the front panel, which is something that they have not done on their rack mount switchers typically in the past. It's been available on the Television Studio HD and the Constellation 8K, but the rest of the switchers in their lineup have not been able to actually select video sources from that front panel. So this is kind of a big upgrade for those who are used to that. We've also got buttons on here for intercom features. So if you happen to be using Blackmagic cameras or their uh, talkback camera converter products, you can actually have intercom built into these, these as well. Uh, in addition, you've also got a screen on the front panel, which is something that we are not used to if you're coming from the ATEM Mini line. So that's very, very useful as a quick reference to see what you've got going on. And that, that monitor will typically display what's on your program output from your main ME. All right, you've got knob for adjusting menus, access to the menus. You've got dedicated fade, fade to black button. You've got a button for accessing Media Player One, and then some buttons for accessing some of the keys. On the on the left here, we've got a headset connector for the for the intercom feature. This is this uses an industry standard five pin connector, which is typically used by I like, say RTS intercom systems, which is a little bit different than what they've done in the past. On the television studio, it actually had a quarter inch headphone jack and and then an aviation style uh, mic microphone input. So this is a little bit different. 
if you want to be able to plug in a normal pair of headphones, you're going to need to build yourself an adapter in order to convert from this 5-pin XLR to a quarter inch or put a new connector on your headphone cable. So that's a little bit different than what they've done in the past. But that is an intercom connection, so it does support both headset and microphone at the same time. I suspect that's probably monaural only instead of stereo like the old ones were, but I'll have to get my hands on one before I'll know that for sure. All right, so and then we step down to, or step up rather, to the 2ME Constellation HD. So this is the one that is a full rack wide, whereas the first one is just a two-thirds rack wide. So you can mount it alongside a web presenter or a, a, a HyperDeck Studio Mini. Uh, so this full is a full rack wide. It gives you 20 inputs instead of the 10 that's on the first. Again, by the, by the way, all these are SDI. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but all the inputs and outputs on these are strictly SDI. There's no HDMI anywhere. All right, so yeah, this steps up to 20 inputs, and other than that, you get a handful of more buttons on the front panel, but most of that other difference is around back, and we'll get to that here in a moment. Then you step up to the 4ME Constellation HD. This is this thing is really a scaled down version of their previous Constellation switcher. So instead of HD, sorry, sorry, instead of 8K or 4K, this one is HD only. All right, so. Uh, yeah, essentially all you're gaining there compared to the one ME on the front panel is additional buttons for your inputs. Everything else is basically identical. All right, let's flip, flip around to the back and take a look. So as you can see, all of the connections here are BNCs. These are SDI only. You're, you know, there's no HDMI on any of these models at all. So if you need to have HDMI functionality, you're probably better sticking with an ATEM Mini or picking up a used Television Studio HD because those actually do have... HDMI inputs on them. Although, if you're buying a switcher at this point, I would very highly encourage you to just go SDI out of the box instead of messing with HDMI. SDI, SDI is just so much more reliable, works over much longer distances. It's just a better connection type uh, for doing video production than than HDMI. So, if you're on the fence, definitely steer, definitely want to steer you towards SDI. All right. So, let's take a look at what else have we got here. So, we'll take a look at the top one, this 1ME model. So it's got 10 SDI inputs. You can connect up to 10 video sources. And then it has six general purpose SDI outputs. Now if you've used some of the Blackmagic switchers in the past, this might be a little bit new to you, where they have previously they had dedicated program, preview, etc. They've done away with that on the, these Constellation models. They're just six general purpose outputs, and you can send whatever video signal you want to those. The only one that I'm not 100% sure of, and I'll have to get my hands on one to know for sure, is whether you can send the multi-view to one of those or not. I do not know that yet, but I will find out and make sure, make sure I mention that here on the channel at some point in the future. But there is a dedicated multi-view output, so that is a little bit different than what you may be used to if you're coming from the A10 Mini series, where you had an output that you had to select between which, uh, all your various sources, including the multi-view on that one as well. So it's a dedicated multi-view, and this multi-view does do up to 3 gig SDI, so it'll do 1080p at up to, six, up to 60 frames per second, which is a huge upgrade from what they've done in the past, even on some of their higher-end models. You also have analog inputs here. Instead of XLRs, they're doing quarter-inch TRS balanced inputs, so it, the older models, if, if you're using XLR and you upgrade to one of these, you're going to want to re either put new ends on your cables or get adapters in order to convert to that TRS. Signal-wise, they're exactly the same. It's just different connectors. That they're doing that to save a little bit of space. All right, come over here to the left side. We've got our, our power connection. Obviously, control. this control port here is actually just Ethernet, and that's what, that's what allows you to use ATEM software control or other uh, pieces of software or hardware on the network. So if you wanted to use one of Blackmagic's control surfaces, the uh, advanced control panels, you can, certainly can do that, and that's actually a recommended workflow. Uh, but that's how you can you're gonna communicate with this switcher externally. The connector right next to that is TalkBack. Now, this is for the intercom features. And they say on their website this is for interfacing with traditional systems like RTS and ClearCom. That, while that is true, this actually is not one of those signals natively. It's a, what we call a four-wire interface. It's basically just line-level audio. And that does ha actually have separate engineer and pro uh, production TalkBacks on it as well. So you're able to do two separate communications, uh, two separate channels of communication through that TalkBack. And this will convert the audio coming in on that to the SDI TalkBack features that Blackmagic traditionally uses with their switchers going out the SDI outputs on the back. Uh, in addition to that, we have USB and we have reference in. So USB here is, this is new. This has not been available on any rack mount switchers that I, I can think of in the past. And that is 
for this to emulate a webcam. So if you want to live stream from a computer, in order to get the video from the switcher into your computer, it's basically just a USB cable. It's not nothing else is required. That's something that the A10 Minis have had from the get-go, but their higher-end rack-mounted production switchers have not had that capability, so this is something that's new. And sort of makes up a little bit for the fact that these do not have streaming built in. But at the same time, you still are going to need a dedicated computer and some software in order to do the encoding if you want to go that route. I personally recommend going with a piece of hardware. It's actually less expensive and more reliable than running with software, but that feature capability is there if you want it. That will wake, work great if you happen to be wanting to use this for Zooms or Teams calls or something similar or Skype or whatever. So that capability is nice to have, although it's not something that necessarily makes up for the fact that this does not have any streaming or recording built into it. The next one here is the reference input. That is basically uh, Genlock. So if, you have, if you're using cameras that have a Genlock input and you want to make sure that all your cameras and your switcher are in sync in order to reduce the latency that comes with not having them in, in sync, you can actually use that. And that's something that's available on all of these models as well. Now, if we take a look down uh, to the, some of these additional capabilities that are on the, the others. So we go to the 2ME, it actually has two multi-view outputs that allows you to display up to 32 different video sources in up to, where did we go? There we go. So yeah, so up to 32 different sources on two monitors. And that, again, that is a 3G SDI output for up to 1080p at 59.94 frames per second. Um, so that allows you to view more of your sources uh, at any given time. All right, now we come down to the 4ME Constellation HD. Obviously, we're doubling the number of inputs again, so we go 10 to 20 to 40, and then double number of outputs, so 6 to 12 to 24. Also, the other thing that we're doubling here is the number of multi-view outputs. So in the, with this one, you can connect up to four monitors to monitor your various sources. With 40 sources, that's going to be something that you're really going to want to do, because otherwise you're not going to have an easy way to, to view all of those. Uh, in addition, the other thing that this one adds is MADI input, a single MADI input and two MADI outputs. And the MADI is a protocol that allows you to communicate, uh, it allows you to send high quality digital audio over a coax cable and it does with multiple channels. So having MADI output, the two, these two MADI outputs allows you to extract the audio from all of your various sources, your cameras, video playback, whatever, in a digital format that you can then run into a switcher that supports MADI or some sort of other converter. Like in my case, I run uh, Dante for my audio network. All I would have to do with this one would be to get a, Don uh, sorry, a MADI to Dante converter, and then I've got access to all of the channels, audio channels that are going into this switcher, which is very, very cool. All right. Um, in addition to that, we also have a remote jack on the, added to this one, and I, I'm, not, I'm not really familiar with that myself. But uh, that is something that they've included on this one that's kind of come down from the high-end model. The other thing I want to make mention of, that this one also includes two power inputs, and that's there as a level of redundancy. So, for, for example, if you have a power source that gets disconnected, you might have, can have a backup so power source connected. The other reason for this is if you have a built-in power supply that, want, that just goes out on you, it just happens to fail during the middle of a show, having that backup power supply allows you to keep up keep up and running, and that's something that they've included on their higher end models for quite some time now. How do these compare to some of the models they've had in the past? So first of all, if you're coming from the A10 Mini series, you're going to be losing your ability to do streaming, you're going to be losing your ability to record video directly on the device. You'll need separate devices, as I've mentioned several times on this, on this, uh, on this video. Uh, the other thing I should mention is that Super Source, if you have an A10 Mini Extreme, is available only on the higher two models of this switcher. So it's not available on the 1ME model. So even though the Mini Extreme is basically priced the same as the 1ME Constellation HD, the Constellation does not have the Super Source feature that's available in the Mini Extreme. So you'd be losing that as well. So it's very much two steps forward, one step back in terms of uh, products, new products that Blackmagic has announced. Uh, if, if you're used to using some of those features that are available on some of those ATEM Mini models and you want to move up to something that's a little higher end, well, you're going to be losing a few features in the process. Not that I can blame Black, Blackmagic for doing so. The, those features are, are some that you typically find people who are working professionally in video production are going to want to do separately anyway. So they, even if these devices included recording and streaming, most people wouldn't be using that if they're working in this sort of a workflow. 
All right, so something else that's definitely worth mentioning, and I neglected to say here at the beginning of this video, like all of these include scalers and frame rate converters on all inputs. And so it doesn't matter what your video source is, as long as it's 720p or 1080 at up to 60 frames per second, these devices will just accept that and convert it to whatever video format you happen to be using inside the switcher, which is pretty awesome. It makes makes it much easier to convert devices, whereas some of the previous production um, switchers would force you to make sure that all of your inputs conform to the same format. These will actually do the conversion for you. Although, having said that, I would highly encourage you to make sure that you're setting the devices to the same format. Otherwise, you can get some strange format conversion artifacts, such as when, you, for example, converting from 24 frames per second to 30 frames per second, motion just becomes very unnatural and odd. So it still would be better if you take the time to adjust your video sources to use the same format as the switcher instead of relying on those internal converters. But those internal converters are there for those times when you can't or you've got a device that refuses to cooperate <coughs> max uh, in, in order to make sure that you're able to get your video sources into your switcher. The other thing that's going to be very different compared to some of their previous models is the generic outputs. So instead of having your dedicated program preview, etc. outputs. These use generic outputs that you can assign to any video source, which which is great. It allows you some flexibility, but it's going to be a little bit of an adjustment for people who are used to working with dedicated hardware outputs for specific purposes. Now, in terms of pricing and availability, these switchers are allegedly shipping now, so it means you should be able to order them with your favorite video uh, source video equipment reseller very quickly. Pricing, the, the 1ME model starts at $995, the 2ME model starts at $1,695, and the 4ME model starts at $3,695, so just under $3,700. Again, it should be available now. In terms of uh, what I think of these, well, <laughs> I think they're very, very cool. Two steps forward, one step back, though. I mean, I'm, I'm personally been looking for an upgrade for my older 2ME Production Studio 4K model. I do shoot in 4K as I'm doing with this video quite a bit and the fact that they've not addressed the 4K mo market just yet is a little bit disappointing to me. I'm hoping they come up with something a little bit later and then I'm not forced to move to their $10,000 Constellation model. But for anybody who's doing HD workflow and wants a higher end model these things are going to be great you know these things offer a lot of flexibility a lot of capabilities in a very small unit you get built-in scalers you get advanced chroma keyers you get advanced audio which are things that we have not had available in any of their rack mount models other than the constellation up until now so this is a, a big big upgrade for people who are able to stay within an hd workflow but if you're wanting to shoot 4K, these are not the switchers you're looking for. So just keep that in mind as you're making your purchasing decisions that 4K, if it's in your immediate or relatively uh, relatively soon future plans, these are probably not the switchers that you want to be getting. So, but uh, anyway, so this is but this is exciting, but at the same time, kind of a little bit disappointing in some of the things that we hoped were not available, like 4K and live streaming and recording of video sources directly with from from the switchers. So that's going to about do it for now. So if you have questions about this, please let me know in the comments very soon. I'm going to be heading to NAB here in just a few minutes. I'll be on the show floor tomorrow morning, and I'll be able to spend a little bit of time with these in person, playing with them, becoming a bit more familiar with them. So if there's something you want me to check, or if there's something you want me to ask the Black Magic staff there, please let me know in the comments down below, and I will do my best to find out for you. So that's going to do it for now. So thanks, everybody, for watching, and have a fantastic day.